Hi, my name is Sandy Walsh. I'm going to show you a little screencast of StackTac and Stacky, which are two tools for looking at the notifications that come out of an OpenStack deployment. Notifications are sent by OpenStack whenever something important happens inside the system. So when a new instance is being created or um, when a, an instance is being deleted, being paused, being restarted, being migrated, um, whatever is happening in there for general information to the administrators and also for billing purposes these notifications are very important um, parts of the system. The cool thing about notifications though is they also become a very handy debugging tool and StackTac is made not only to provide uh, a nice user interface for visualizing these notifications but also for gathering important metrics about OpenStack, how things are working, um, are operations taking too long, are you meeting your service level agreements, um, are, are the customers having to wait too long to get an instance created, those are the sort of things that you can get from um, StackTac and the notifications that come out of OpenStack. So there are two GitHub repositories for StackTac. Um, the main one is of course RackStack or Rackspace slash StackTac, which is a Django application, gives you a nice web interface, and it also gives you a worker for pulling the notifications out of the rabbit queue and getting them into the StackTac database for processing. Uh, that's, those are two very important parts of the StackTac infrastructure. The other project is called Stacky, and Stacky is a command line interface to StackTac. If you don't want the web server, or you don't like a web server, or if you're a, you know an administrator or an operator, and you prefer your command line tool so you can run tail on it and grep it and do that sort of thing, Stacky allows you to uh, perform those operations. StackTac itself has a REST interface on it, and Stacky just uses the REST interface to get basically the same sort of uh, information, but in a different format. Stacky right now is is very early. Um, it has some basic information in there, but uh, we're adding a whole lot of new stuff to it for uh, metrics and collection and, and monitoring, uh, which is going to make it a very valuable tool. But I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit more later. So first of all, let's just get going with getting StackTac up and running. Um, I've got a OpenStack uh, deployment running, uh, a large one with a lot of different cells and a lot of different data centers uh, running in the background. There's, uh, we had to just configure, we had to configure StackTac to know where these deployments are and so we can get it set up with the database and, and whatnot. So let's just get started with that. So when you clone the repo, um, you'll get the basic installation here. There's a couple of key directories you want to look at. The first one is the worker directory and the other one is the etc. directory. So the etc. directory has some sample config files in it. And there's two config files that you have to be concerned with. One is the StackTac config shell script, which basically just sets up the environment variables. And one of those environment variables points to the second config file, which is, in this case, the sample StackTac worker config JSON file. That's a mouthful. Um, but it's a JSON file that points to all of your deployments. So all of your Rabbit servers out there. And most people are probably just going to have a single OpenStack uh, deployment running and they're just going to have one rabbit server. So in that case it's a pretty simple e uh, simple configuration file to deal with. But if you're working with a large deployment uh, that file can get quite large. So let's just have a quick little peek here. I've got one of these set up um, already and we'll look at StackTac config and it's saying okay I want a, a database called StackTac um, username password for the database and I've got my install directory of where I've got StackTac set up to actually just be my GitHub repo. And then the other variable is the deployments file, which is the JSON file that I talked about, in which in this case I'm going to point to a, a copy that I've already got created. Django needs this environment variable called Django settings uh, module, which is where it gets its configuration. And Django uses a, a Python file for all of its configuration. Um, in this situation, we've got the settings file. Um, modified so it will pull all, all the important information from the environment variables here. So really all you have to do is set up this environment variable, um, source it, and you should be up and running. So let's get started by creating a database.
and we're just going to do create database stack tack, which is what we set in our config file. Oh, oh I must have already created one from before. Okay, if I didn't have one, <laughs> let's just flush that old one, and we'll create it again. So now we've got a clean database. Um, simple as that. Now with Django, we have to run SyncDB, which is going to take our models file and populate our, our clean database with it. So we'll run the manage program, and then we'll say SyncDB. And you can see here that it created the, the three main tables that StackTac needs, in addition to some other Django files and, and auth files. It's asking us if we want to create any super users. We don't do any auth in StackTac. We assume you're going to run this in a, in a safe place, so I'm not going to create any uh, super users. So now we're all ready to go. Um, in order to start the Django server, we just basically do the same thing, just like SyncDB, but instead now we say run server. Now this is this is just running the, the Django debug server, which is um, not a great web server. If you want to run this in a you know in, a, in an environment where there's going to be a lot of users hitting it, then obviously you want to put something like Nginx or, or Apache or something in front of it where it can uh, operate a little bit better. This is just a very, very simple web server here, but for demo purposes it's, it's absolutely fine. Or if you're just running this in a small environment, it's, it's, it's totally sufficient. Okay, so we're running, uh, we're on localhost on port 8000, and if we jump back to our web browser here and open a new tab, we can go right there, and we're up and going. But it's complaining here. It's saying we don't have any deployments. Uh, do you have the worker configured and running? Oh, no, we didn't. We did set up our, our deployments file. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, but we haven't run the worker. So there are no events, no notifications getting pulled out of OpenStack and sent into the database. So we've got nothing in, in here. It doesn't know about anything at this stage. So let's go back to the worker. And uh, so like I mentioned, the worker is a directory just off of StackTac. Um, and the JSON file, that configuration file, let's have, have a look at that. So sample stack tack worker config JSON. A JSON file is a very simple data structure uh, file um, for defining data structures. And in this case, we've got a dictionary which has a single entry, one key called deployments. And that key points to a list of other dictionaries. You see by the square brackets here. Um, it, this is a list. Um, so the first one here is this dictionary, and there's a dictionary per deployment. And there's a, not really a whole lot of tricky data in here that you have to deal with. This stuff is th this is the stuff that you'll basically get out of your nova.com file anyway. Uh, it's already defined in there. So the name is anything you want to call this deployment. Um, the host, the port, this is the standard port for Rabbit the username and password for accessing it, and then the virtual host, which by default is just the, the top level host. And if you had a large deployment, you would have an entry, entry in here for every deployment you've got set up. Um, if you're just running this locally, you would just have a single entry in here. Um, it is JSON, so remember no trailing commas, which is different than Python. Trailing commas make JSON unhappy. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty simple to set, set up. I've already got one of these set up for, our, for my environment, but you'll have to configure this too for your setup. So let's go back into the worker directory. And there's a, a couple of different files here. If you're deploying this out in the production, there is a StackTac shell script which can help you uh, with your um, Etsy init D uh, setup. But the main one is start workers. And what start workers will do is it will read that JSON file, and for every deployment that's in there, it will spawn a worker.py process for every deployment. So there's uh, the worker.py file is the eventlet uh, server that runs and pulls events out of Rabbit and dumps it into the StackTac database. And start workers will spawn one of those for every deployment you've got out there. So let's. Uh, Let's run start workers. And there we go. So it found the JSON file, it pulled out all of our deployments, and now it's consuming messages and dumping it into the database. And there's a log file that will show up in here if you want to monitor it and see that stuff is actually get going through. So 
now we can go back into our web interface and I'll just F5 this and it found now it's got all the deployments so it this is basically the first thing that the worker does when it launches is it goes out to the database and it populates it with all the uh, all the deployments that we had defined and it adds this other option up here which is all so I can look at the notifications for any particular data center if I like uh, or I can look at all of them and all of them is usually the best way to do it because especially if you're in a multi-cell environment you want to see when a call comes in at the top level cell and then get sent down to all the all the sub cells down below. So we'll click on this one, and uh, takes a couple of seconds for the data to come through. But this is a real time update. Every two seconds or so, it's going to go back and it's going to pull back more messages from the server. And I, and I apologize for the display here; it's a little bit squished in order to get it into a, a screen capture. Uh, obviously, on a bigger screen, it'll look a lot prettier. But anyway, so we can see the data center where the event came in. Um, the source of the event or the type of the event when you configure OpenStack there's a flag that you specify for where notification should go and in this case we've called it monitor and what will happen is that every notification that will go through is either an informational one or an error notification so you'll get monitor.info, monitor.error, monitor.whatever um, as these events come through from different parts of the system uh, the tenant ID, the user who's actually doing some stuff with the system, the service that's generating these events, uh, the, the host that they came from, the event. So the event name, if you look at, um, oh gee whiz, what's the, I think we can do it from here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There's a wiki page called System Usage Data, which will tell you all about the notifications that come out of uh, OpenStack. Um, so there's a, um, it'll tell you about like the tenant ID, the instance ID, all of this comes out as a JSON payload in the notification. And then there's, you'll see all of these notifications here. So there'll be, for example, compute.instance.resize.confirm.start and then a corresponding .end. So when the work is actually being performed, you should see a .start. Um, notification get generated and then when it finishes you should see a dot end. If you don't, look for a dot error because it's some, probably something went wrong in there. And some of these notifications have um, data pertinent just to that type of notification. So there's a reverse, you know, there's a, an exists. Exists are kind of a noisy one. They, they happen quite a bit but and they're really for billing purposes. Um, so they're talking about how much bandwidth has been used and whatnot. Um, so volume can volume create so you get the idea here if you go through this page you'll you'll learn a lot more about all the different types of notifications and stuff that can um, come out of OpenStack so let's go back to our stack tack interface and now what we're seeing here of course are all these notifications that I just talked about and then the instance ID and if, if I scrolled over further there's some other information like how long ago that event came through uh, if I scroll down here there's some other information down here so if if I'm looking for a particular UUID or something, I can type it right into here. If I don't want to click it up here, I can, you know, if it came from a log file or if it came from support or someone else, I could uh, type it in and do a search and I would get all that information about that instance ID down below. The, th the important thing to remember about StackTech is that this is all read-only data. You can't hurt anything in here. It's, it's a great tool for learning how your system's working. Uh, all these things are, are links and you can click on any of them and get um, data related to that piece of information. So for example, if I want to learn more about this uh, UUID here, I can click it and down below in details I'll see any events that came through related to that UUID. Let's try another one here. All right, these are all little single ones. I want to find something here. Let's try this one. There we go. So this one's got a few events around it. Uh, and again, these are in uh, reverse chronological order. So we can see that there was a create start, a couple of updates came through, and a create end came through. So this was obviously creating a new instance. Uh, every time you get an update, compute.instance.update, that's a state change uh, that's occurred in the instance. So either the virtual machine state, has the power state has changed, or the task state uh, has changed within OpenStack. So you can actually go through and, and by following all these different update messages, you can see exactly what's going on with your with your instance. If it's getting hung up on 
um, on networking or if it's getting hung up on uh, storage or uh, in the hypervisor by looking at the update messages you can get some information some some good information um, and you're not seeing that here because it's a there's a lot of data in in these messages but the little plus sign next to it will um, fetch that information and give you the actual JSON payload that came out of the notification so now around this notification this event here here's all the gory details on it so here's the see this is in the spawning task state right now and the old build state well, it was building and now it's just transitioned into active so by looking at all these different variables you can see what's going on here on this 512 megabyte instance that just got created um, so it's really handy information so this is uh, this is really all that StackTac does is it's collecting this data it's showing it to you uh, in this user interface and you can click around if I want to see what's happening on this compute node for example I click on this one or let's try that one there and then if I scroll down I'll see any events that came through um, on that particular host ID same thing if I want to see what this tenant has been up to I can click on that and uh, see what what this tenant has been doing um, or a particular cell or you know you name it you can click on it and find it find a way around it so that works really well uh, it's a handy little system uh, it's for for operators and admins uh, they don't really like this sort of an interface obviously they prefer a command line tool something there where they can control it and embed it in another script and get some useful information out of it that way so that's why we have stacky and stacky is the command line tool that will talk to the running stack tack through the rest interface and give you uh, and give you this information so uh, there's an environment variable that we need to set for stacky which is stack tack URL and this is this the the URL of the HTTP server for stack tack so we'll say stack tack URL is equal to our local host here 48,000 um, and then if I say Python stacky, I should really make this a proper executable, but for now this is the way it is. Then I'll get a list of commands and I can do things like show me all of the events that have been collected. Right? And we'll see any events that just came through the system. Um, if, if tomorrow a new event gets added to OpenStack, uh, there's nothing that you need to do on the stack tack or, or stacky side, it will just start uh, building up this list automatically as it sees new events coming through. So we can see all the different you know start and end operations. Here's a resize, prep, start, end that came through. Um, if I want to look at a particular event, I can say show and then whatever the event number was. So one, two, three. Okay, so here I see um, this was a scheduler operation that it uh, finished doing some scheduling for a run instance and uh, and there was a request ID so on on run instance end there is no UUID so let's if we try 122 uh, this is this is a lot more interesting here now so this is when we scheduled when the scheduler picked the server that's going to do the work here um, so now we've created a UUID I'm going to copy that because we're going to use that in a second and here's the request ID that came through the UI a request ID is a unique identifier per API request UUID, of course, can span multiple uh, requests from the server. And again, this is a little cluttered here on, on the smaller display, but um, if you've got enough screen resolution, uh, this is a very handy um, report that comes out here. So this is all of the events that came through related to this UUID. And uh, so we can see that there was an instance update, so obviously something changed power state. That's when the UUID actually was, was assigned. Um, it got scheduled, another update happened, it got sent down to this compute node, or actually it went from uh, in this cell and went down to this compute node, transitioned through a bunch of state changes and then create end was done. Then there was an update where a call came through to start deleting it, so delete started, shutdown started, shutdown ended, delete ended. So just in that time span we created a server uh, and then we deleted it right afterwards and you can see all the different over here you can see all the different state changes and uh, task states and everything around it and you can see which compute nodes and everything were involved in the operation so um, there, there's a lot more stuff going to be coming into 
into Stacky. Uh, right now, it's it's really just trying to mimic some of the stuff that comes out of Stack Tech, but we're working on doing some really cool notifications uh, or post processing on the notifications. So things like how long did it take for uh, a call to come through, right from the API node, right to the to, to the service that uh, fulfilled the request. So we can do key performance indicators, uh, SLA type stuff, um, and get some really important timings in here. We can find out which operations are, are taking a long time to perform, what the anomalies are. Um, so that's you're going to see a lot of work going on around the stacky side of this very quickly. Um, so we're going to be adding that to the back end in StackTac and then exposing that through the stacky interface. And this is stuff that, um, because we're going to be using this for a lot of reports, um, you probably won't see this exposed in the actual StackTac GUI. Well, we may, who knows. But right now we're, we're sort of focusing on the, uh, on the command line tool for it. So that's everything. Uh, that's StackTac and Stacky and uh, how to get it installed and up and running. So hopefully uh, you get a better idea for what you can do with, um, with this tool and uh, look forward to your feedback on it. Uh, so, you know, fork it, get some pull requests in, try it out in your environment. Uh, we'll update the documentation, fix the bugs as soon as they get reported. Um, this is something that's going to be getting a lot more attention um, from us anyway. So thanks for your time. Look forward to hearing from you. Cheers.